So today I wanted to show you kind of how I look at urban photography and we'll go through five or six steps on how to shoot it. So we are at a train station because we thought let's make it a bit generic so that everyone that has access to a train station can do these sort of shots. What I normally like to use is banisters. They are a great leading line to your subject or you can use it to just lead the viewer's eye. So what I'm gonna to use today is a 16 to 35. I normally like to shoot these a bit wider, but because the 12 to 24 is very expensive and I know not many people have it, I'm just gonna do it on a 16. Right, just setting up the shot now and because it's quite dark, I'm having to push the ISO quite a bit. So I'm at ISO 2000, f-stop, I'm putting it at f4. In terms of aperture, I don't want it to be too shallow. So I'm shooting it at f4. So more of the frame is gonna be in focus. Because if you shoot it at 2.8 or 1.4, you're just gonna have a very thin line in focus and the rest of it is kind of gonna be blurry. So you don't want that. And in terms of shutter speed, because we have a still subject and not much in the frame is moving, actually nothing in the frame is moving. We're shooting it at 1 60th of a second, which is, gonna do for what we want. If you were shooting something moving, you probably want it faster, probably 250, 300. But because we're going, everything still, 60 will do. So as we said, we're gonna use the banister. As you can see, creates like a, a leading line. We're gonna put Ben over here, just so we have a subject there. So yeah, I've given him my phone, just so he has something to hold in his hand, otherwise it'll be a bit random. But you could do it without the phone. Maybe tell him to, maybe tell your subject to turn on the torch and maybe put it to the ear. Also, what you could do is put your phone on a white screen so that it lights up the subject's face a lot better and it'll look a lot cooler in the picture. So yeah, let's do it. Try a few options before this station gets busy. How are you, man? Come down. How are you this way? Thank okay. you. Bless. Right, so we're gonna do the second option now. The torch is on on the phone and we're just gonna have it to the ear so it might create a cool effect. Right, another thing that you wanna look out for, leading to the train, there's normally a passage or a tunnel like this one, for example, and they're normally really cool for symmetry and stuff. So what I normally like to do is shooting on a wide angle lens. When you put a subject in the middle, that subject is gonna be very small. As in, if you shoot it on a 35 or on a 50, the subject is gonna be a lot bigger and it's just not gonna have the same effect. So I recommend to shoot at 16 or below just to capture the architecture because you're gonna get a lot more into the frame. Another thing is don't get stuck on just the middle. See, there is so much more going on here. There is like reflections on the side because of the material. Also, you can see here there's like some gaps up here which are really cool. The only thing I feel like is missing is a subject here and I'm gonna get Ben to get in the middle and get placed right there just so we have something to look at. As you can see I'm using 180 of a second f4 800 ISO. We have a bit more light into this tunnel so we don't need to push the ISO just as much. Right, there is one last tip that I think is obviously, well, it's probably the most obvious tip, but long exposures with trains always work. What we're gonna do also, we're gonna fake, so they're like, say you out and about on your own. So we're just gonna use a tripod and you don't have a friend like Ben that comes with you. Um, yeah, you can do it anyway. We're gonna frame it up Wait for the next train. I really like the frame where you see the platform number, the train and this leading line of the lights. And then obviously we're gonna have me in the middle there and the blurry train. Do you know how to set up a tripod? Not this one, mate. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> That's a brand new one. Yeah, I can tell. Stiff. <laughs> Never been used before. Right, I've put a five second timer on and I'm just gonna test shoot it, see what, what happens. 
I'm saying the, the focus point to the ground. See, the reason why I'm not modeling this is so that you, if you're a lone ranger in the photography world, you got to so do this by yourself. Moved forward just because there was a sign on top of the train is covered. You got to do it. Yeah, we'll get it maybe when. Wait, have you? Oh, I think you got it. I think I think you got it. Yeah. I didn't think you pressed it because it, it wouldn't the screen didn't go off. Oh, I think that was pretty good. Not sure if it was in focus. We're just gonna give it one more go. As soon as the train starts, we go. Uh, change the framing of it. Wait. Oh. Because we got the front of the train. The, f the train at the front is blue, so we got some blue coming in to the middle there. As in, if you do on the second one, there is no blue. Well, I was saying to Ben, what we should do is, for a second video, maybe show you guys how I've edited it, because some of them needed uh, merging and stuff, so a few bits and bobs on Photoshop. Right, that was it for tonight. If you like the video, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share it with your nun, do whatever you want with it. I really enjoyed making the video today, and I'll see you on the next one. You wrote to me.